Welcome back to Retro Wednesday, the Tigerium Hanger. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about the N2 Toys, the Mad Max Road Warrior toy line. Now, this is the only real Mad, Le Mad Max toy line that I know of, and might be the only one for some time. Now, the thing about these toys, they're not great toys. They are okay sort of statues with a little bit of posability, and that sums up the line. But there's a little bit more to it than just that. So we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about each one of these figures, everything in Series 1 and Series 2, which is like nine figures. There's not a lot of figures to it. We're going to get into this. Coming up. Okay, we're going to start looking at the card back here to kind of sum up the toy line real quick. And so with that... There are a handful of figures here. It shows one, two, three, four, five, six for the first line and four for the second. So I guess 10 total, but three of them are Mad Max. So there's Mad Max with his Dinky D, was the name of the dog. And then there's another one, looks like it's sculpted about the same, but it comes with uh, this little guy right here. And then we've got all the rest of these. So uh, just looking at it, this is kind of a checklist for series one. You know, what's, what's all out there for series one? And then here we go with Series 2, and then of course with Series 2, you have four different ones. But Max is, I think Max is sculpted a little bit different for this one, but maybe it's still all the same sculpt, just a different paint job. And he comes with, I guess this is the one that comes with the gas tank, I think, I'm not sure. But anyhow, looking at it like this, this is uh, what we're going to be looking at. We're going to look at each one of these figures. So we're going to start off with the warrior woman here. And since I do have her packaging in, I think all the packaging is pretty much the same packaging with Mad Max in the back and then Desolate Wasteland back there. And then the only difference would be the writing where I think right here is where it says what the figure is, warrior woman. And so as you can see, this thing was uh, reduced to five and then reduced to two dollars. So she's pretty common, but that's 20 years ago. Original price was eight bucks. So we're going to kind of look at the back here also because this does have a little montage showing what each character's name is. Now here is the figure herself. Okay, so she has five points of articulation, no head articulation. Her wrists, or I guess elbow, they move a little bit. Not much, and she doesn't hold her weapons very well. And no leg articulation, she basically is in that one stance. She is pretty stable though, she does stand okay. So that's pretty good. So that's really all you can do with her. Let's get her in a pose like this. But she does look just like the show, like the movie. And she's got a pretty good hairdo. The face doesn't look exactly like the actress. I th really think they they just didn't hit the likeness. Uh, maybe they weren't good sculptors or they just didn't want to worry about paying likeness rights. Uh, the thing is with all of this, it's like the whole toy line, they did everything cheap, cheaped out. Anyway, uh, she's got pretty much everything that you saw in the movie. Pretty good front and back. They did a, a pretty good job on her front and her back. and. Everything all around, so more or less a slightly poseable statue that looks really good. <laughs> so next up we have Gyro Man, and this is the guy that would fly his little gyrocopter, and that's kind of cool. And then here is the packaging, nothing special, but does show he comes with his telescope thing, uh, crossbow, and a snake. So, looking at all of this stuff going on with this guy, another one with lack of posability. And he, he doesn't even have forearm movement, but they gave him waist articulation so that you could sit him down in a gyrocopter if you choose. Now, I was going to get the A-Team gyrocopter, but I think that he wouldn't work in there because of his tail, because of this. So that does kind of suck. And as you can see, I don't really know what colors these are supposed to be because he's got like a green leg and he's got tan legs. So I, I don't know. These are discolored over the years. And of course, my loose one's a little more beat up, but I think they're supposed to look beat up. I think that was kind of the point. So anyhow, uh, looking at this here, there's the snake. Now, I don't know exactly <laughs> how I would, I'm going to be displaying all of these uh, accessories at the same time, but he has the same problem holding the crossbow as, like, this is not a realistic pose uh, for a crossbow. But one of the weirdest things is he's got this, but 
how is he supposed to hold it? I don't get it. Like, he, there's no way for him to hold it other than he's just kind of carrying it. Like, oh, I've got this thing that I'm not going to use. And I've also got this other thing that I'm not going to use properly. And it doesn't really make sense. So, anyway, he still looks pretty cool. A pretty decent representation of the character. Not a good face likeness, though. Uh, I think the other girl looks closer, the warrior woman looks closer to the actress than this does to the actor. And then Snake, he can hold his snake or you can put it on his arm or something. But I, I just think that the snake doesn't even look like it's, that doesn't look like something you would have him on the ground. So let's get him on the arm here. Like maybe it's climbing up his arm or something. So, so I mean, it's kind of cool. So they had to include some sort of accessories. I'll drive that tanker. You should look at yourself, Max. You're a mess. All right, so there are three different versions of Max, and I think it's this guy, and then he's repainted to another one, and that's uh, that. So this one, this particular one, comes with this guy over here. We're going to look at here in a second. And then this one over here, I think, comes with a gas can, and then... The other version of him came with the dog, the Dinky D dog. So I don't have the Dinky D dog, so there it is. So anyway, uh, this is Max, and I think they did a pretty good job on his mold and all that kind of stuff. He looks okay. Uh, the face sculpt does not look like Mel Gibson, so that's that, we'll give that a pass. But aside from the face sculpts not matching the actors, uh, this does look like a pretty good Mad Max. Nice dirty wash to him and all that kind of stuff. So he has his arm, uh, some elbow articulation, or maybe it's bicep articulation, and then he's got shoulder articulation and legs. So one, two, three, four, five points of articulation because the head does move. And his hand right here, he can hold the gun and he has like a finger for that. So series one is this figure, but just repainted. And then series two is this figure. And I'm jumping to series two because this is the last good guy. And as you can see, they added some extra stuff right here, some extra uh, an extra part. It was molded in on this one, but on this, it's actually an extra part that they kind of glued on there. So that's kind of cool. That, that's interesting. And here's his gun. And the Series 2 one looks a little cleaner than the other one. And he's got the articulation. That doesn't move. So he doesn't have the extra articulation there. But his head moves. <laughs> his head moves, but his bicep does not. So... I'm guessing it's an all new figure. Is that even the same head sculpt? That's, the head looks very similar. So so they, they did kind of do a lot of stuff to cut costs and be cheaper. But in this one also, the jacket's opened, where this one here, the jacket is zipped up. So there's some differences between series one and series two, but there it goes. Let's take a look at this little guy over here. Here's how he scales next to a G.I. Joe classified Zartan and some random dude I found on the shelf. And so there it is. So he's much bigger than, say, the 3.75 inch Joe, and about the same size as G.I. Joe Classified. All right, now I don't know this little guy's name. I think he calls him Kid. So anyway, but um, the, the likeness of the face probably isn't spot on, but the whole spirit of this figure is there. This might be the best figure in the line because he does look a lot like the character, what you'd expect. He's got his nice little glove there, his boomerang, so, and he can catch it. So there's there's a lot to this little guy, and he's an accessory. He's just like an added in accessory with Max, which is really cool. So uh, I, I do kind of like that. Here he is from the back. So he does just have four POA, does his head turn? Four points of articulation. So since he is an accessory, I guess they didn't go all out with the massive articulation of five points he only has four <laughs> all right so now we're getting into the one they call wes and i gotta say this is probably one of the more memorable characters from the show from the movie and you kind of remember how he looks and all that kind of stuff so he does have that whole mad max vibe going on with him now his head doesn't turn his arms move and you've got that on there and he has knee articulation be careful because his knees are weak <laughs> so anyway he's got that shoulder pad thing on there there's just a lot of great detail put into this guy and he looks really good and he's got his arrows on his leg there he has this 
exposed butt and he has this uh tail piece on there which is soft goods which it feels like this whole piece might be something they put on there it's all glued in maybe this piece is glued in but a uh, great head sculpt actually this one matches the actor pretty close too nice mohawk or small mohawk and then there he is from the back. It looks looks great. This is a great looking figure. Not a whole lot of articulation. No real accessories. All those accessories are built in. He's like all in one kind of deal. But it gets the job done. He's pretty solid. He stands pretty well. And he fits the part. So another one of these is probably one of the greater figures. Uh, the bad guys might actually be some of the best. Aside from that little guy. There has been too much violence. Too much pain. Just walk away. Give me a pump and the whole compound, and I spare you lives. The gate. So next up, we get Lord Humongous. So uh, I'm gonna get into his sculpt in just a second, but he does have three accessories, which he doesn't hold very well. First of all, he's got this gun, and it's his own gun, molded just for him. So uh, that's kind of cool. And I, I kind of think that you're supposed to be able to put his finger in it and make it look like he's about to shoot it. So the, this is kind of a cool thing that they did there. But also at the same time, I think this is the hand that's supposed to hold this. So you just pick your accessory, but it doesn't really hold it well. So that's not all that great. And then the third accessory that he has is his helmet. I'm gonna put his gun back in there, I like that. His helmet and take his helmet mask off and there he is. So I wanna say that uh, this, they call him Humongous. He's scrawny looking compared to the actor. Like, you, you do see muscle and all that kind of stuff. It just looks like a lean guy. The actor, I think, is much bulkier and bigger than this. And so, and I also heard the actor is also the same one that came back to play Joe in, in the Road Fury. So anyway, this is a pretty good looking representation of him overall. Just, I felt like he should have been bulkier, beefier. Uh, I think the, the, you know, represent the actor's form a little bit better but this is what we got and at the end of the day it's not too bad it's only got the let's see head shoulder and leg articulation so next up we're getting into the series two bad guys and they had three bad guys this is Bad Cop, and he looks pretty cool. Now, this one, I think, is absolutely the hardest one to get out of all of them, and I have to admit that uh, it seemed like none were on available, and then a whole bunch showed up all at once, So, and then now it's the only ones available are real expensive. It's stupid how that works, and I wasn't going to pay stupid prices, so I waited to get them. This is a cool little uh, chopping piece there. Forgetting what that's like, it's not a chef knife, but anyway, he's got that. Uh, he has a crossbow and he doesn't hold it very well. I did put like a rubber band around his hand to get him to look like he's holding it, and it's kind of falling off there. But uh, you gotta do what you gotta do with this toy line or any of these to get the poses and achieve what you want. And he has a walking pose, which takes quite a bit of effort to get it to, to stand, but anyway, he does have his head articulated and his. There's, he is from the back. And so he's got one, two, three, four, five, standard five POA. No waist articulation. Now, one thing is to make this one, this one's like hard to get. Maybe people like to troop build it or something. I don't know. Maybe that's why it's hard to get, harder to get out of all of them. But he does look cool. So A, he's hard to get. And B, he looks cool, which really sucks to tell you the truth. Because it would be awesome to have a couple of this guy. Even though really there only was one guy dressed exactly like this in the show. And in the show, he was kind of inconsequential, but still, really cool figure. Click on it! Click on it! Oh, <laughs> so now we're getting into Toady, and Toady is the character that cut his fingers uh, sliced off when he tried to catch the boomerang. So, and then everyone laughed at him, and then he laughed at himself, and like, oh yeah, I'm all, now I've got a worthless hand. So it does kind of look like the character, but not the actor exactly. You get the point. I mean, you know who this is. You're like, oh yeah, this guy got his fingers chopped off. And I don't really remember him having these dolls, whatever, but uh, maybe I should rewatch it again because there's so much to movies like Mad Max and Road Warrior, all that, that there's so much in the background and props and stuff that you can't take it all in. Even if you watch it 10 times, you still might find 
on your 11th watch that there's something like this that you didn't see. So he looks kind of cool. Uh, looks like his 5 POA is his head and his arms and his legs. So that works. And he's got kind of a dusty look to him. Uh, trying to get the glare off there. Yeah, an all right looking figure. Now, the only one I've got is sealed. And I'm like, well, I'll, I'll find a cheap loose one down the road. Uh, although this was cheaper than any loose one I've seen. So I got this. There's the back of it, of course. We've already seen that. And we can move on to the Golden Youth. You know, it's kind of interesting with Golden Youth, two things. First of all, I didn't know that this character had a specific name. So did they have to just make up a name for him? Is that what they did? Like, hey, we make this name up for this character, call him Golden Youth or whatever. The other thing is, uh, I think he's the boyfriend of Wes. Now, obviously, in times like this, I think there was only like a couple of females in the whole biker gang or whatever. So, yeah, I, I don't know the whole situation what was going on there so anyhow he did ride on the back of the motorcycle which i just figured was transportation like they don't all have their own vehicle but then again okay so with that out of the way he looks kind of interesting a lot like the character and uh, it looks older like the character himself like the actor was way younger than this head sculpt so that's one thing that's off but they did kind of get the the whole outfit just right that looks exactly like the outfit that was worn and the pose, I guess, is okay. Uh, and it comes with a bat. So, really strange that the Series 2 stuff, uh, there's all he comes with is a bat and the figure. So, uh, not that impressive accessory wise. And really, with this whole toy line, uh, articulation wise, I'm guessing he has his head articulation, his arms, and his. No, he doesn't have leg articulation, so he's got to have some articulation in other places to keep his five points of articulation. But anyhow, there's Golden Youth, last one, another one that's hard to get, and a little underwhelming once you get it in hand. So this has been my Retro Wednesday look at a 22-year-old toy line from back in 2000. I always heard it was from 1998, but anyhow, this is Into Toys Mad Max, the Road Warrior toy line, and it was... One of those toy lines that they didn't make very many of them, not a whole lot of articulation, but they, they look a lot like the characters. You actually can make a nice display and you could say, this is definitely Mad Max. These characters all are very recognizable from the movies and well, specifically one movie. And with that, it's kind of worth picking up. Is it worth the price? Not what people are asking. The secondary market prices on these do not make them worth it. But the fact that there's not going to be another Mad Max toy line for some time till the rights change from my understanding then uh, I guess then this is all we've got so I'm just gonna be happy with what I've got so anyway let me know what you guys think about this toy line do you have any of these do you remember seeing these anywhere evidently they were at Toys R Us like and subscribe to Hanger Hanger out Drive that tanker. You should look at yourself, Max. You're a mess. <laughs>